Les acteurs mondiaux de la World robotique... players in the field of robotics gathered here in Lyon for the first international in a robo salon. The experts all agree robots will become part of our daily life, just like mobile telephones or the internet. We're not quite in Star Wars territory yet, but it's getting closer. The revolution, the robolution, is happening quietly. Robots can be fun, but they're more than that. They're practical. They are, in a word, useful. That's what we found here at Inarobo. Here is now the most famous French robot. At 58 centimeters tall, it can talk, see, communicate and dance. It's a learning and research tool which can be used like a teaching assistant. It now has been available for universities and labs as a research tool for two years. Uh, we're working on developing applications uh, for the robot. We can imagine a future where, in fact, robots, uh, they're going to give people more autonomy. So the, the main goal with now and with the robots that you see here is uh, not to take over the jobs of people or to do things for people, but we can imagine, for example, someone who has a, a sort of a small handicap, a loss of autonomy. With a robot in the home, uh, they can maybe have more autonomy. The market for service robots is still in its infancy, but it's now worth some $3.5 billion. This figure is estimated to double over the next three years. At the moment, these robots are very expensive. The most advanced costs tens of thousands of euros. Everyone's expecting the dawn of robotics, and it won't happen like that. There won't be a date. What will happen is robotics will infiltrate our lives in lots of different ways. Transport, medicine, education, leisure, at home. And this group of things will converge, and one morning we'll wake up and say, well, that's not bad. Bill Gates said in the 80s every household would have a computer. I think in the next five or ten years each home will have several robots. Some robots have been developed for scientific research and health. Birth Sim trains future midwives the technical skills for a difficult birth, including the use of forceps. Another medical application. This device can be used as a physio aid, but is also used in labs and nuclear power stations to manipulate dangerous elements from a distance. Robots can do many things. So vacuuming your home, that's obvious, but also we've created robots to help uh, people in Iraq and Afghanistan with the problem of bombs, mines, explosives, and we've created a robot called the PackBot that can go up to these dangerous uh, devices and help defuse them or make them safe. Saves lives uh, most days, I think. It's, it's a, such a huge problem that um, uh, these robots are active over a hundred times a day. The PackBot and its big brother, the Warrior, are in use in Japan at the moment. They're being deployed in the tsunami-damaged Fukushima nuclear plant. The PackBot is being used to measure radioactivity with Geiger counters, and the Warrior is manning pumps which are cooling the reactors. Among the most popular robots at Inarobo was Pleo, a dinosaur, more particularly a Camarasaurus. It learns and adapts, emitting a dinosaur-esque purr when it's stroked, for example. No doubt it'll be a hit with children, the generation after all that will probably have to live with robots.